Today is Independence Day. Okay, well in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can put on your very own mini pyrotechnic show. To the video! Okay, so you want to know how to turn this into this. Well, with today being Independence Day in the U.S., I guess this technically is bald guy sigh on the 4th of July. Well, anyway, a uh, quick disclaimer. So this is kind of a potentially dangerous video. And so you probably shouldn't do this at home um, unless you know exactly what you're doing. But I, I'm willing to whisk it for the biscuit. <laughs> Besides this whisk, there are a few other things you're going to need to make this work. So you can get most, if not all these things from Amazon. I'll go ahead and put a link down in the description. Um, but like I did, you can also go to your local hardware store um, and pick everything up there. Uh, pretty cheap. Some of the stuff even from the dollar store. But before I go through the shopping list of things that you need, let's take a quick look at how and why this works. Fireworks and pyrotechnics work off the same principles or similar principles. Uh, I just want to tell you, spoiler alert, I'm about to kill the curiosity. What you see in the video is a common science demonstration kicked it up a notch. So the iron in the steel wool is undergoing a chemical reaction called oxidation. But uh, only talking about that is, is kind of like only admitting there's only a head side to a coin. There's another side. There's two sides to every reaction. Uh, he got the upside. I got the downside. See, there's two sides to every short. And in this case, the oxidation has a partner called reduction. So as one part of the reaction is being oxidized, the other is being reduced. So this is the simple reaction of iron being oxidized while the oxygen is being reduced. Okay, so this is a very simplistic representation of what happens. We have iron which comes in the form of an element, its symbol is Fe. To that, we're adding oxygen from the air, which is O2. You can see I represented it with two oxygens up top. That's going to turn into iron, there's two of them, oxide, there's three. But actually, we need to balance it. So what that means is we can't create or destroy anything. We're actually going to make two of these guys. You'll see one here and two there. So we would normally put a two in front. And in order to get those four irons, we'd have to put a four in front over here. And then oxygen, there'd be two times three is six. But there's two in every one, so this would get a three. Now that's a little bit messy, but the actual reaction looks like this. Four iron um, for every three oxygen molecules, and that's going to make two molecules of iron oxide. So that's what's actually going on as the iron spins around and burns in the air. So you might recall the old saying, Leo the lion says, Gur, to keep it straight, which one is which? For a more in-depth review of oxidation and reduction reactions and why they occur and how the atoms interact with each other and all that good stuff, uh, a little more in-depth chemistry, go ahead and check out that video right there. But enough about the reaction type. This reaction just needs a little push to get started. So in the biz, <laughs> uh, we call that activation energy. We actually need to light the iron on fire. But once the reaction starts, the release of energy that happens during the reaction is enough to keep it going. We can, however, speed up the reaction by supplying the things the reaction needs, they're called reagents, uh, faster so that the reaction can happen faster. So by spinning it around, we're actually providing oxygen to the iron uh, by spreading apart the particles of the steel wool. We're actually speeding up the reaction as well. We're allowing that surface to get to it. And the rest is just sparks and smoke and awesomeness. So what do you need? Well, you need some steel wool. Usually four aught um, will work, but it might be pretty cool to grab some different diameter or sizes and compare the experiment to see what's better you need a whisk. No, not really, uh, but it does add some weight that makes it a little bit easier. Now you might need some wire or some fishing line I, to attach the whisk to, uh, but you can use 550 cord rope, whatever. Uh, you're gonna need a lighter. All right. Okay. It's also a good idea to have a fire extinguisher, a bucket of water, a hose, or a band of willing elephants from a children's book. Just in case you get yourself into some trouble because we are dealing with fire. Uh, maybe some safety uh, glasses or safety goggles and definitely want to keep an eye on what you're wearing. You can do this 
like I said, with anything. But what you're looking for is something that allows you to do open uh, shutter or long exposure or light trails. Okay, so a big tip here is use a tripod. The shutter on this thing is gonna be wide open for quite a while, um, and so you're gonna to need uh, to slow things down and hold them steady for this to work. You're also gonna want some source of light, okay, like a shop light or a flashlight or something like that um, to help your camera focus when you get started. Uh, if you wanna kinda of learn a little bit more about how the photography end of all this works, check out this video right here. Uh, that'll explain a little more in depth of what's going on with the camera side of things to help you get a better shot. It just so happens that I had like 500 glow sticks laying around in my basement. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do this two ways. Uh, you're going to see the glow sticks and then you're going to see it done with a steel wool and you can make some comparisons on uh, what's different. Okay. So any small kids in your family are non pyros. Uh, this is a good way to get them involved as well. Totally safe. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, it was a lot of fun to make. Go out and make your own and be safe. But uh, I had an idea in the midst of it. What if you could grab like 10 fireflies and tie their butts together and swing them around? If it were ethical, uh, it would make the same basic motion, I guess. That's called bioluminescence. I'm going to be making a video on that. I'll put that link right there. Go check that out, and I'll catch you next time. Ball guy side. See you later.